Um, let me ask this firstly, Henry. Uh, does this show, story prove we were right to leave the EU? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, that's exactly uh, what I was going to say uh, when I was invited uh, to do this interview a few moments ago. Um, thank goodness uh, we left the European Union. To be told to forcibly vaccinate people is unacceptable. And it comes hot on the heels of uh, the EU's incredibly slow vaccine programme, which, of course, um, Labour and Liberal Democrats and nationalists in this country were urging us uh, to join yeah. and be part of. So uh, good thing we weren't part of the EU vaccination programme. And now because of that failure, good thing we're no longer part of the EU where we could see forced vaccination. Just quite incredible. What do you think is the... I, I mean, she, she did a... a Play, to, to coin a phrase, she played a political blinder in some respects because she started her speech by saying, look, it's not for me to tell different nations what they should do, but then went on to say quite robustly, I would suggest, albeit in a calm manner, which is perhaps even more disconcerting, uh, to suggest that compulsory vaccinations would be something that absolutely needs to be considered. What do you think her thinking was on this? Well, I think this is classic EU. Um, they say, well, of course, this is uh, for the member states, uh, but then quickly follow that up with uh, essentially a command, an order as to what should happen. And this was the whole democratic deficit problem with the EU in the first place. Yeah. Look, you know, I'm not anti-vaxxer. Um, I've got my third booster booked in for next week, uh, and I encourage people uh, to get the vaccine. I think it is important to protect ourselves. But the principle of choice has to be paramount uh, in this. And the idea that from the centre, over 300 million Europeans um, could be vaccinated um, without uh, their individual say-so yeah. is really quite chilling. What, what are they going to do? Start holding people down in the street? Well, I guess the way it would work is it's, it's, it's by sort of coercion. So yeah, it's, of um, if, you don't, if you don't have the vaccine, then um, you know, you, you can't go to the shops, um, you can't go to venues. Mm. Um, it, it's about you won't be able to function as a citizen under our state uh, if uh, you don't comply with what we do. I, I guess that would be the route that, that, that yeah. would be. Is the difficulty for us, though, Henry, that if enough countries went on board with this mandatory vaccination COVID passport thing, then we would also find ourselves affected because we wouldn't be able to go there unless we could join in with those same rules and regulations because one assumes they would insist on visitors and tourists having the similar credentials. Well, if this were to go ahead, and I think there is a big if on this because I think we will get uh, some pushback uh, yeah. within uh, the European Union. I'd be amazed if, if we didn't. Uh, this would be economically catastrophic uh, for the European Union, uh, particularly um, those countries that do rely uh, on visitors. Uh, so uh, I, I, I suspect that this story has some way to go yet. Yeah, it takes nothing in France, of course, to stick on a yellow vest and start protesting with Macron uh, having an election just around the corner. I can't imagine him putting his name to this one anytime soon. Henry, thank you. Henry Smith, Conservative MP for Crawley.